So I had a lengthy chat with Michal Martin, of course, last week, congratulating him and going through uh, all different issues involving him being Taoiseach and, of course, the significance for it on Lee side. Uh, under different circumstances in a different time, if things had been handed differently, it could well have been Mary Lou MacDonald that I was having that conversation with, but it is not to be. She joins me by phone. Mary Lou, good morning. Good morning, Neil. So under another time and set of circumstances, it could have been you, as the old song says. How do you feel about that? Yes, well, sure, look, um, it was Hall Martin's day. He has been returned as Taoiseach and you can hear the the joy and the celebration correctly in his amongst his family, his community, who are delighted for him. And I'm sure the people Lee side, um, whatever your politics uh, and whatever your wider view, uh, like to see a Cork man uh, doing well. Mm. So, um, so, of course, I mean, I, I on a personal level, I wish me all nothing but the best. This is this isn't about personalities. Ultimately, it is about politics. And for my part, my job now and Sinn Fein's job is to lead a very energetic, very positive, very determined opposition. Because we got our we got our riding instructions from the electorate. We we got a very strong vote, as you know, not least in Cork. We've Tommy Gould, we've Donna Coelera, we've people elected. Yeah across the board now and we we are very clear that our job is to deliver on housing yeah, yeah. to deliver on health so I, I looked, their toes I, I looked to the at fire. that I looked at that list because I, I watched your speech in the doll and you went in about on yeah. about health care these are these are the topics you dealt with health care housing uh, child care affordable child care a united Ireland you spoke about carers dis- people with disabilities young yeah. people elderly uh, and a greener world it struck me as like the bursty bassets all sorts you know um, not on like all other political parties, you all have the same list. We well, see it's not just about having a list, uh, Neil. It, it's about what are you going to what are you going to do about things. So, for example, on the issue of housing, and housing was core to the campaign. The question is whether or not now this new government is on the right track or not. Whether or not they can actually deliver affordable, and let me emphasise affordable housing, whether or not they're prepared to intervene to ensure that rents are affordable. And I looked at the programme for government that they produced, it's very long, um, but the housing section is particularly concerning because it has Fine Gael's fingerprints all over it. It is a recipe for more of the same. Uh, It's very, very underwhelming. It's very concerning. So our job now as opposition is not to simply give out about that. We have to get stuck in. We need to be absolutely firm and insistent that the right things are done rather than repeating the wrong approach. That's the role of opposition. We're we're going to do that. But where were you for the last three months? I mean, you were so quiet, Sinn Féin, during the whole COVID-19 crisis. Ireland recorded... Very, very questionable statistics internationally. I think we're the fourth worst in Europe and the eighth worst in the world with regards to deaths per million. But you seem to have been asleep for the past three months. Well, that's not true. I mean, you have to bear in mind that uh, every part of Irish life, including politics, got closed down. So the doll wasn't operating in its normal way. The, 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 the committee system wasn't operating. You had a caretaker government um, in the eye of the storm, but also the ones making the calls. And there was naturally, I mean, of course, um, a, a media, an entire media focus on what they were going to say or do next. Um, and far from being quiet, we were actually extremely busy, Neil, and where the government got things right in the eye of a deadly virus, we supported them uh, and we, we more than uh, lifted our, our load in terms what? of uh, doing things to keep people safe. Where, where they got things wrong in terms of nursing homes, in terms of testing what and did tracing. You say, but and what did you say about nursing homes when people were roaring and screaming for PPE and they were borrowing it from painters and decorators, staff in nursing homes? Or, or indeed the, 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 the shambles of a start with regards to actually testing people? Well, I had a lot to say on testing because I was just one of the very, very many people who was tested and waited and waited and went through the whole nightmare of having the illness. And I only got my result when I was coming out of it. 
So I had plenty to send up once I got better. But my party colleagues, uh, and in this regard, Louise O'Reilly, our health spokesperson in particular, has, has been extremely vocal extremely vocal and extremely engaged with the HSE, with the Chief Medical Officer. Um, bearing in mind also, uh, Neil, that once this crisis came about, it was Sinn Féin, it was myself, in fact, who insisted that Leo Varadkar bring all of the political leaders together because I knew at that stage we need to have more than a, you know an observer role in terms of how all of these things were handled. Um, we were very, very... Uh, up front and ahead of the curve in terms of the need to close down the schools, the need to contain this, far as we understood absolutely just how dangerous the situation was. So no, we have, we far from being asleep. And by the way, while we were doing that work, we were still at that stage in touch with other parties um, and putting our, our very best foot forward uh, in terms of looking to to form a government, um, a government that would would have better housing policy, and that, and that, and that ended up not happening. And that's why you said it was a power grab. I think you called it jaded um, politics or jaded parties yeah. with jaded ideas who circled the wagon to keep us out. Yep, yeah, that's what happened. Um, that is, and but that's democracy, that, isn't that democracy? The way the of course, the votes fell. Listen. Of course, listen, there is nobody disputing the fact that the Dáil met, Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, the Greens and a, a number of independents have elected um, Micheál Martin as the Taoiseach, as the leader of government. There's no dispute there. There's no dispute as to the fact that that happened and that, that is, um, that's the way the system works and that's democracy in action. But what happened prior to that and what gave rise to that um, outcome is something that was about keeping Sinn Féin. And then more broadly, that appetite for doing things differently and for a change, uh, keeping that out. And um, you will recall and you'll have heard um, Fianna Fáilers, Fine Gaelers openly say that, that this was, they were keeping us out and that was that. And you might take the view, well, look, that's politics and they're entitled to do that. Or you might take the other view that I take, Neil, and it's this, has nothing got to do with me, has nothing got to do with my elected colleagues, but I happen to think when more than half a million people vote in a particular way, I think there's something very, very high-handed, there's something arrogant, there's something not good about saying we will deliberately connive to keep the party that won the largest amount of votes, even out of talks about government. That's problematic. They it's call it the end of civil war politics now, though. You heard Michal Martin refer to I a portrait that, of yeah. Dev, a portrait of Michael Collins in the same room. Would they be turning in their graves, do you think? I don't know. I think it's I think it's always very difficult and problematic to speak on behalf of those who are no longer with us. I think the... We all think and agree, I'm sure, the the civil war was a tragedy. The partition of our country has been an absolute disaster. Um, And the quarrel at the time, pro and anti-treaty, Republican or or free state, was very, very deep. And as you know, Neil, and people in Munster and in Cork, it divided families, it divided... Yeah, but can I just ask you about Um, that with regards to the young vote? You're very, very strong in the young vote. You're very strong on social media. I've seen that. Um, Very effective. But... You know, I don't know that young people get the civil war politics anymore. I mean, you know, like, are you a populist party, really, that got a populist vote from young people, but then, like, wouldn't be able to deliver anything beyond that? Like, say, for instance, with business, the self-employed, the multinationals, they don't trust Sinn Féin. Like, they, they 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 would panic at the thought of you actually having the control of, say, money, for instance. I, I, I notice um, when Sinn Féin does well, there's always this attempt to kind of explain us the way, you know, so we're, we're populist or we're this or we're that. We are an Irish Republican Party. We are about a fair Ireland. We are about a socially inclusive and equal Ireland. We're about a united Ireland. We're about an Ireland in which every citizen, doesn't matter where you come from, whether you're from the north side of Cork or the south side of Cork or where you're from, that you get an equal... No, I, I, know, I know you're saying that, but I'm just That's telling you those that are... I'm just talking about those that would yeah, be uh, but, but kind listen. of ap- apprehensive of a, a populist party without any substance. 
but we're not populist and we do not lack substance. And it, can I tell you... But don't they think the reasons, that, though, those that are afraid of Sinn Féin I know, power. but sure, listen, listen, of course they say that. Listen, Neil, for almost a century, the same two political particle parties have ruled the roost here and they've run things and they want to keep it that way. And they are not going to allow others, i.e. Sinn Féin or other others, independents or uh, in... Um, in to upset that apple cart. That's what this is about. This, from the, the election onwards, this is about power. This is about who holds power and how power is used. Who benefits from the kind of government that we have. That's what this is about. So, of course, I mean, I'm grown up enough and I'm long enough in political life to know. Your critics will throw the kitchen sink at you. But I know who we are. We know who we are. So, and the people who come out and who support us, and more importantly now, who depend on us. I'm very clear on this. People are depending on us in Sinn Féin as a strong party, as the leaders uh, of opposition, to actually deliver now. So let me say to your so, listeners, we're not, revert, we're not reverting back to how things were, Fine Gael, uh, style housing policy, totally unaffordable people tearing their hair and all of the misery that comes with that. So sit back, so sit back and, and so, yeah. so just, so sit back now and let them make a hames of it. And go back into that, the next well, election okay, with... Neil, where did you hear me saying that we are sit back? I, I don't know you hugely well. I would have thought you would know me well enough now that I'm not a woman for sitting back. Sitting back isn't in my in my psychological or political makeup. It is our job to get things done. And far from sitting back, um, we will be absolutely clear in holding this government to account. But even more than that, we are going to force this government onto, into places where they don't want to go because we will get affordable housing. We will get that affordable know, but, housing. We uh, will have movement on I know, but you see, you know, we will you have see movement the, on health investment. And that is our pledge. And we will do whatever it takes. And we will be extremely forceful and fair and progressive. And we'll bring forward our ideas. We, we, we want to share them. We want to see them implemented. But far from sitting back, sitting back is not on the agenda. No, what I mean by that is let them implode amongst themselves. There's three of them. There's already a fury and they're only 12 to 24 hours old. You know, the, you know the issues in the west of Ireland where there's zero cabinet yeah. representation inside in Fianna Fáil. They're livid over, livid over the snubbing of Dara Cleary. Let them bring down their own houses. Well, look, I mean, that's that's the, the, the game, if you like, of politics. And I saw that I, I was myself taken aback when I saw it's only when I actually saw it on a map and you see pictorially where where everybody is located. And it, it is true to say that the West, the Northwest, the South, East have been completely uh, over overlooked. And th- those parties will, will have their own internal tensions or their own internal debates on that. That's a matter for themselves. But like for me, this this isn't a game, and it's not about it's not about positions of powers, you know, or, or you know, d- dolling out, you know, giving out the goodies, or you know, th- this is this is about so much more. We are now looking at a decade and a number of years that are going to be very difficult. We're going to have to fight for every job, every enterprise. We need to rebuild our economy in a fair way. Um, but we also have huge, huge opportunities to change things for the better. So I want us to avail of that opportunity. And the opportunity is huge. And we have a very strong team in the Oireachtas. And I don't want that our intention is not to kind of, you know, sit back and, and take pleasure in the discomfort or the failures of others. We want success for Ireland. I want success for Gork. I want success for Munster, for, for the whole, the, the island uh, as a whole. So we're very energetic at this time. We're very determined. Um, and w- we will make, people will see a very marked difference from previous all um, as to how the, the opposition really presses the needs and the hopes and the aspirations and the, legit, the legitimate expectations of regular people who are out there doing their best, raising their families, and who deserve to have a government and a system that respects them and that actually delivers the basics of. The you know, you talk about. You know, you talk enjoy. about when you talk about respect, or you know, being, uh, you know, Thomas Gould at the weekend said that was kind of a weird thing to say. Mary Lou is my Taoiseach. Um Some people got very annoyed about that. That it'd be more in his line for Tommy Gould to be saying. Congratulations to me, Hall, a cork Taoiseach, no? Well, look, anybody who knows Tommy Gold, and I know Tommy well, and there's it's kind of a silly thing to say, say, wasn't it? 
Well, there's nobody going to slight or say a word about Cork or any Cork man, Michal Martin or anyone else when Tommy Gould is in the room. I've never but known but a more wouldn't have been better say, proud um, man. But would you not have said his, congratulations, Michal Martin, first T-shirt in Cork since Jack Lynch? I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure Tommy has and, and will continuously congratulate his fellow Corkman. I understand what he meant. What he means is that I am the leader of his party. What he means is that we share a common. He said, "Mary Lou is my Tisha." He said, "Mary yeah, Lou is my Tisha." And the word Tisha, of course, means chief. I am the leader of the party. That's what Tommy meant. He meant absolutely no disrespect to his fellow Corkman and anyone. In fairness, Neil, anyone who knows. Tommy Gould knows where he stands when it comes to his beloved Cork and every single citizen therein, including Michal Martin. So I'm very clear, um, and to- Tommy's very clear, Michal Martin's the Taoiseach of the government, and all of Cork, I'm sure, wishes him well and is proud of that fact. And I'm the Taoiseach, I'm the leader of, of Sinn Féin, and Tommy and I work very closely together, and we- we'll be up and at it delivering for everyone, including the great people of your of your city and county. Okay, very well said. Appreciate you taking the call, as always. Thanks so much, Much obliged to you, Sinn Féin leader. Taoiseach of Sinn Féin, if you like. Mary Lou MacDonald. Like Mary Lou MacDonald. Like.